All right, I think it's time to finish up the rest of this program. To do that, I'm going to clean up some of the old code in here. For example, I don't need this draw display function anymore, which wrote to the console. And I don't need any of this old code that wrote to the console, because we're now using SDL. I still need to add support for this waiting for key press, but I haven't run into a game that uses that yet. I should add this try catch back in eventually, but we'll do that in a bit. And we should add sound effects as well, which would be pretty cool. Uh, no clue how to do that. So really, we do have quite a bit more work to do. I, for, I totally forgot about sounds until just now. Uh, the Chip 8 does have a beep sound effect that runs as long as this sound timer does not equal zero. And that would be neat to try to figure out. I've never really done audio in SDL before. Hopefully, it can do it. So to get started, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that this code here for updating the display runs at a consistent frame rate, say 60 frames a second, uh, similar to the timers that are in the CPU. And then that way I'm hoping to reduce a little bit of the flickering and also speed up the CPU execution a bit. So let's try that first. To do that, I'm going to use a stopwatch again. Uh, so we'll call this the frame timer maybe. And then if our display timer, timer, frame timer, eh, frame timer, if the elapsed milliseconds is greater than 16, then we'll do all this stuff here. And at the end, I'll remember to restart the frame timer. So now we should get something at about 60 frames a second. We're still sleeping for one millisecond between every single uh, step. So I'm going to remove that call here and let it run as fast as it can which is way too fast. It would have been nice if this program used the, uh, the, one of the timers, but that's okay. I guess we do need to have some sort of thread.sleep in here, just to make this game run at a reasonable speed. There's still a lot of flickering on those things. It'd be nice if I could It'd be nice if the program actually called like a draw update or something like that. I wonder how much of this is my render clear happening versus the actual copy for the render. I guess is the problem that this just isn't double buffered? Because, ah, uh, no, for sure. This is showing here that it's it's drawn something where both the paddles are black. So it's not an issue with SDL clearing the screen. It really is a problem with the uh, chip eight outputting some display values where it's just black on those edges. I don't know if there's much I can do about that right now. Let me try a different frame rate, just for fun. No, I thought for a second it looked a lot better, but it didn't. It's not true. Okay, we'll just stick with that. So we're running it at 60 frames a second, waiting one millisecond between each instruction, and that gives us a pretty reasonable speed here. Cool. Now one of the programs that looked like it had some good sound effects stuff was the uh, Brick Breakout kind of game. So let's load that up and see if I can figure out the controls to it. Just spamming all the different buttons. So it's four to move left, six to move this way. Cool. And this one does have sound effects in it, so I should be able to get the beeper going. Sorry, now I'm just playing a game. That's neat. It's got uh, it's got the score up there. I'm glad those fonts just kind of worked out. Oh no, went the wrong way. Yeah, apparently I'm not very good at it. Let's see. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of research into sounds in SDL. So play beep in SDL. 
see if there's anything about it. How do I make a beep function using SDL? Wouldn't that be cool? I want to make my SDL program sound a simple beep. It's a sound buffer, but it doesn't work. With the stroboscope, it gets initialized beeper and generate samples to some work with random values. Try to add the line B equals zero to beep or beep. Wow. 404. Isn't that bogus? OS dependent. No, oh, this is a beep in the console. That's not what we want to do. This is STL init the audio, and it's creating a sample and a buffer. And then it loads a wave into there. And then it opens the audio device, pauses it. Okay. I guess we can do something like this. So maybe I'll create a 16 millisecond beep noise, which is just, I'm just gonna use a sine wave. And then we'll keep playing that every 16 milliseconds as long as, or you know, I think a better way to do it would be to create a long wave file and then just stop it. So pause and restart the audio every time that it, the uh, sound timer hits zero. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go. So let's give this a try. We're going to figure out how to do some audio next. The wavelength, okay, so common common sample rates are like 44,100, 44,100 samples per second. Uh, so I think we can do this. Let's create, it looks like it's gonna want a wave buffer that's a bunch of bytes. And our wave spec, I wonder if it's going to allow us to use like 8-bit. Let's just see what it sounds like. Um, we'll just get started. Wave data is a new byte and we're 44,100 samples per second and we can run up to uh, several seconds, I guess, because the sound timer can go up to 255 and that's 60 hertz. And so that's about four and a quarter seconds. So I'm going to create five seconds worth of sign data here and uh, loop over all this data, data.length. And what we're going to do is we're going to assign each value of i to a byte that is 255 multiplied by. Is this the right? Yeah, 100. We're going to we're going to center it at 120, and then we're going to add to it 127 times math dot sine of i times math dot pi times two times a thousand divided by the sample rate, which is 44,100. So what that should do is that should create a one kilohertz waveform for me, which will sound like a beep, or will sound like a, a tone of some sort. And this should create five seconds worth, and it should be centered about 128. So hopefully that kind of does the trick. Now this might do something a bit weird because it's probably gonna be looking for a signed byte. So maybe we'll create a signed byte I never really use these. Um, so we'll actually just center it at zero, 127 times that. Let's just see what that data looks like, make sure it looks reasonable. So there's the wave data. Let's take it out hexadecimal, kind of goes up, kind of goes down, kind of goes back up again. That looks pretty reasonable, looks like a sine wave. And I've got, let's see how many samples between each one of these. I've got, I started here at zero. And my next time I went up was at 44-ish. Yeah, 44-ish. And so if I'm if I'm completing one sinusoid every 44 samples, and I've got 44 100 samples per second, I'll take 44 100, divide that by 44, that gives me about a thousand. And so it looks like this sine wave is gonna be at one kilohertz. Perfect. So we've got some wave data. The next thing we need here is we need an SDL audio spec. Audio spec. Wave spec. Audio spec. And what can we do to this? We've got channels is equal to one. We've got the format. Who knows what that is? 
samples is equal to 44100 times 5. What else do we need? Size. What's the difference between size and samples? I think format's going to be the big one we need. Uh, SDL audio format. Well, we got signed 8-bit samples. That sounds pretty cool. Audio signed 8, because that's what we're doing. It's going to be super quantized. It's going to sound like old school like Mario kind of stuff, but I think that's cool. STL.S8. Is that in here? Audio S8. We'll give that a try. And the number of samples, it's complaining because it wants a U short. U short? Maybe that samples actually needs a sample rate. Let's take a look here. SDL audio spec. Samples, audio buffer size and samples. Audio buffer size and bytes, it's calculated. Okay, frequency is the samples per second. So we definitely need that. Audio spec dot frequency is equal to 44100. Samples. Sample specifies a unit of audio data. When using STL Open Audio Device, it refers to the size of the audio buffer. Samples are set to 4096. Okay, let's try that out. And let's just try to play it here because this is this is getting pretty ridiculous. Play a sound. Okay, where am I here? I need to call SDL.load wave. And we're going to pass it. Oh, I don't want to do this. Looks like there's load. I don't want to load a wave file off the disk. I want to. I want to call this thing where I actually provide the data. What options do I have in here? Close audio, free audio, get audio, lock audio, open audio. What's this thing do? It's not quite what I want yet. Wave spec user data. Don't need that. It's this thing here. I need to call load wave, but I want I want to pass in my data. Yeah, I guess. I can maybe just pass an empty string and uh, we'll pass in the audio spec, the audio buffer. Oh, this is this is not quite what we want. Okay, provide audio samples directly to SDL. this SDL sound thing that sounds kind of interesting SDL sound it's an add-on to SDL I don't want that I want I just want to use SDL waveform generator using SDL audio Okay, it looks like we can just open audio 
with a callback function. And that callback function goes and fills it with a bunch of data. Let's see what that looks like here in C Sharp. So we're not going to load a wave at all. We're going to open audio and we're going to set audio specs callback equal to, what does it want? A new audio callback, which takes a bunch of in pointers. Which are audio callback, user data stream and lang, user data, user data stream and lang. What am I going to do with that? Creates a sine wave. Express ripple, it runs continuously by using an incremental counter. Sure. So we're going to move this sine wave generation into there, I suppose. Okay, so we'll have an int sample equals zero, I guess. And then we will do, let's see, wave pointer equals sound buffer, sound position. What did they do with the user data here in the stream? Oh, it looks like they've got a bunch of questions about this too. They provide their fixed up code. Okay, this video is starting to get pretty long, so I'm going to stop it here and then uh, continue in a few minutes. But we're we're gonna get this sound stuff figured out.